the compression test and it it reveals lots it will tell us about the mechanical condition of our engine if valves can seal properly or we have wear on a piston rings or scoring and wear on the cylinder walls let everything make sure your engine cool it down otherwise you're risking uh, to strip the spark plug thread just do it when engine cooled overnight or at least uh, cool down for a few hours that's number one make sure your battery fully charged because we need enough power to crank the motor several times for dry test and wet test make sure battery is good next thing we're going to unplug our wires from the spark plugs never pull the wire pull it by the boot and we have our all spark plug wires wires disconnected from the spark plugs we'll pull the boots up one two three and four those uh, three and two it's easy to reach from the bottom with the needle nose pliers just work it out put it straight in and then pry it up it will come off and then set a boot as to the side then you can reach the spark plug this one's number four is quite easy as you can see lots of uh, dirt and debris build up around the spark plugs in the valves we don't want all that good, bad stuff go into the cylinders and cause the damage we need to blow it and clean it with the compressed air what we're going to do now we remove all spark plugs by using a spark plug socket and uh, long enough 3 8 extension drive with a ratchet spark plug number one because we're going to reuse those spark plugs we need to mark all of them from which cylinder it came put number one and the uh, same thing we're going to do for rest of the spark plugs plug number two pretty clean spark plug number three Pretty tight. Next, uh, disable the ignition by unplugging the connector from the ignition distributor. Like so. Set it aside. Next, we're going to pull the fuel pump relay. We need to remove this. Uh, plastic piece and there's a relays underneath okay there's metal shield over here and then we need to remove the 409 uh, this is a, your fuel pump relay just wiggle and pull it out that's how you disable the fuel pump now you need your um, compression tester kit the gauge with a proper end squirt a bit of oil it will help to screw it easier and uh, only tighten it by hand we'll start with the cylinder number one try not touching anything just go straight into the spark plug hole and screw it like this make sure it's not cross threaded here we go now I'm going to uh, push the gas pedal all the way down to the floor and crank the engine seven times I will do the same number for each cylinder make sure we'll get the most accurate reading as we can let's cylinder number one dry test
150 uh, 160 number two dry test five psi dry test cylinder number three or gas pedal all the way to the floor God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now time for cylinder number four. Squirt a little bit of oil to this thread. There we go. Cylinder number four. Dry test. Cylinder number four. Dry test. Cylinder number four, one seventy. All right, my dear friends, here's our uh, compression dry test results one sixty four cylinder one, cylinder two, sixty one sixty five, cylinder three, one sixty five psi, cylinder number four, one seventy. What it means, what we're actually looking when we do compression test. We're looking for consistency between the cylinders. We don't want to see a difference more than 20% in between, which will show us that one cylinder is probably wearing out more than another. And uh, if we see the low compression on two cylinders side by side, it, it can be the blown head gasket, and then that uh, pressure can travel from one to another. As we can see here, all pretty much in a 10 percent limit maximum and if we have the compression which is 135 psi that's excellent and here is even higher which is great and if you read the compression on your engine at the dry test lower than 100 that's your engine is wearing out it's going bad and it's showing us such a good numbers actually i'm really excited that's uh, i expected to see 120 130 that's 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 even better than we can expect friends now we're going to do our vet test even comp dry test shown us a great results but we still want to complete it our job and vet test what it does it it isolate the trouble in the cylinders or it's in the valves and Yeah, I, got, I put a well into the cylinder number one. Let's do the test. To do the wet test, we need to squirt a little bit of oil into the cylinder. Just a little bit, I, I can say, just probably about less than a teaspoon, something like that. Just do a few pumps and just enough to seal the space between the piston ring and bore. Okay, we'll put some oil in cylinder number two, do the same, and cylinder three, cylinder four, same way, and then we'll get a result, but I will keep filming a little bit. We have our wet test done as well, as dry, I already commented, and uh, yeah, we can see a higher engine pressure, which is normal, and what we're looking Four, it's the same what we did before, it's for consistency in between the cylinders we pretty much I can see the straight line of pressure it stays even less than 10% uh, variation and what we're looking in between the wet and dry test if you see 
then no difference or difference less than 5% between wet and dry. It means your uh, valves needs to be uh, addressed and the valves cannot seal properly. They probably burned. And as we see that well sealing it and we don't have any differences in between the cylinders as well. We're done with the cylinder number one and we're putting a, our spark plug back in place. Yeah, I'm putting our spark plug number one back into the engine. And always use a piece of rubber hose and fit it on top of the spur plug. And never start with a wrench, start by hand. Make sure you're not going across the thread. That is a critically important. As you can see, I start it by hand until it goes with the hose. And then I take it off. Spur plug socket has a rubber cap inside, which is designed for pulling a spur plug out when you're removing them, and uh, then it will sit on top of the spur plug. And when you're installing it back, you use just regular dip 5 8 socket, like so. Okay, how you tie it? Because those washers already squeeze, we're not going a quarter turn, we'll do, go up maximum to. 1 8, 1 16 on the turn until it stops. Okay, I don't apply too much force. I put my hand over here, I don't grab it here, just tight it like so. That's tight enough, will stay. And now you can easily pull that socket. Time to put everything back. We took quite a bit of stuff apart, and uh, I'm going to connect all wires and all panels I need to put back and thank you so much for watching I appreciated that and if you have any questions or you have your own ideas about what we did just leave in the comments below thank you so much and take care